ASIO. There's one man in Parliament who's been doing a great deal to try and protect the rights of Australian citizens and activists. Senator Ludlam, we appreciate all the work that you've done to question ASIO and their powers and the way they use it to spy on protesters and citizens. And we'd like to invite you up to say a few words. Do I need to use this? These are terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never actually been here before. Um, you can see why they want to move out of it, right? <laughs> yeah, too small. So they're setting up um, just around the corner um, what I think will be the second largest structure in the capital at enormous expense to taxpayers. This is an agency um, which has had its budget double and then double again, its staffing complement double and then double again. Uh, in the name of national security. And it's very difficult to actually tell what it is that they do. A huge amount of their time uh, has been taken up doing security assessments for people fleeing genocide and war in violent parts of our region. Uh, and you would, you would maybe question whether that's an appropriate use of the agency's time. And a certain amount of their time is actually tracking people like us around, um, whether we like it or not. If uh, their threshold question, which is spelled out in their act in a fair bit of detail, is if there's the potential for violence or politically motivated violence or anything like that, then we come onto their threat radar. Uh, if there's critical infrastructure in place, so if you're locking onto a coal loader or that kind of thing, that then gets elevated to a potential national security issue. A lot of the surveillance and spying on campaigners, on journalists, on whistleblowers and civil society organisations is done by units within the state and territory police forces. So these guys only get involved uh, if we're seen to be a very, very serious threat. The most difficult thing is understanding exactly what it is that they do in our name. So the federal police, if they tap your phone or if they're reading your email, they need to go and get a judicial warrant. That gets reported and we have a little bit of information about what goes on. These guys do not. They do not report the wiretapping, they do not report the mass surveillance that's going on on the Australian population. And I, I strongly believe that most of their work is bent towards legitimate national security ends, and some of it really isn't. And it's impossible to tell which is which. It's impossible to tell. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to tell exactly what it is that this agency does. So we do what we can in Parliament, uh, but we also need the kind of citizen watchdogs, and we need to remind ourselves that it's not it's not innocent and this work is not done in isolation uh, and there's a reason why we have chained together corporations, the Department of Defence, embassies uh, and Australia's own domestic security agencies. There is a reason why these groups and these uh, institutions and agencies have all found themselves on this list is that these issues are linked. They are linked to questions of democracy, questions of war, questions of mass surveillance on civilian populations suspected of no crime. So I'm glad we're here. Are you guys glad we're here? Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your patience. Wash your windows! <laughs> How much money did they spend on the new building? Uh, I would probably need a Canberra local because it kept going up. Is it up to 700 million bucks? Oh, I thought it's it was 650. A... Okay, I'm and exaggerating. They haven't been able to move in yet. So and they have not been able to move in yet. And apparently somebody lifted their floor pans and floated them to the Chinese government. So so much for your <laughs> top secret secret agency. That's kind of that's kind of sad and ironic, uh, given the amount of money that is spent on these agencies. Um, in an age of climate change, we need to ask ourselves what will provide for genuine security. And I'm not sure that it is continually redoubling the staffing and financial components of spy agencies. In fact, I think our security rests in a completely different direction. Absolutely. Thanks very much for being here. Yeah.